All right, folks, today we're going to learn how to make our own microphone cables. You can save a ton of money by doing this yourself. And we're going to start out with a few basic instruments that we're going to use. Here's our soldering iron. I like to use a brass tip or a copper tip. You want to make sure that your soldering iron is tinned. Now we're going to use a 60-40 solder. I like to use a small diameter. Now here's our clamp that we're going to use today. I like one with a sturdy base. And we're going to need either a cable tester or an ohm meter to make sure our cables are working at the end of the day. We're going to start off by looking at a few different types of connectors. These ones here, we've got one that's low quality and one that's a much higher quality. This one's the better quality connector as you can see. Now, we're going to start by looking at the Made in China connector. Now here we're just going to take this apart by taking out this screw. Okay, now we're going to pull these two apart. And as we take them apart, you can see uh, what this one really looks like inside. It's actually made more of plastic with a little bit of tin around the outside. It's very light. And what this one uses for a stress relief is just a little crimp at the end, which typically works pretty decent, um, but it's only a single stress relief. Now our higher quality connector actually has a couple different ones. It actually has this rubber boot that we're gonna unscrew, the stress relief, and the inner piece. Now this one actually has four separate pieces. I'm gonna take a closer look here at the terminals themselves. This is an XLR female connector. And here we have our first stress relief. Now the stress relief actually has three prongs that clamps down as you screw on the rubber boot, which is the second form of the stress relief. Now we're gonna take our handy dandy strippers and we're gonna score the end of the cable to get us started. This cable is made in USA. We're gonna look at another type here in a little bit. Now that we got that end off, we're gonna take a look at our copper shield. This is a spiral copper shield with very sturdy copper. Now here we can see a uh, more in-depth look at our positive wire, our neutral wire, and this is the little filling agent, and here's our shield. Now this cable is made in China. I'm going to take off that end and look at the shield. Now this shield still spiral copper but the copper in this is much more brittle. The filler inside this one is a lower cost cotton, which is a very soft cotton. Now for the sake of the demonstration, we're gonna use the cable that's made in USA. Now we're going to strip off the ends of our wires here. We're gonna want about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch exposed. Now we'll do the other wire. And here's what our ends look like. We're just gonna give them a little twist to tighten up those strands. And this is where the helping hands come in. Um, it's really easy for something else to hold the cable for you. What we wanna do is we wanna tin the ends of the cable here. This makes the process go much faster. You always want to tin every wire before you solder it. Typically you just want a little bit of solder on the very end of each wire. It's also a real good idea to tin the connector itself. Uh, you want just about the same amount of solder and you want to make sure you get all the terminals. This is a good spot to check your solder. A glossy solder means that you've got a good temperature 
if it's real dull, that means your solder, uh, your soldering iron is too cold. And if it's burnt looking, obviously it's a little bit too hot. That's a good idea to remember to put your uh, rubber boot on the cable before you solder the ends on because then you'll end up scratching your head later figuring out how to put your connector together. Now here's a closer look at the end of the XLR female connector. You can see a number one, a number two, and a number three. That indicates the terminals. One is usually the shield, two is usually the positive or the tip, and three is typically the ring or the neutral. Here's our wire again. And in this case, our red wire is going to go to two, the blue wire is going to go to three, and the copper shield is going to go to one. And here's a look of how it's going to look like when we solder it on. I typically like to start with the shield because it's a little bit harder to maneuver. What we're just going to do is we're going to warm up the connector and then we're going to push the wire right on next to it. Now you can tell that the connection is solid if the solder actually kind of sucks in. After that dries, you're going to see a nice gloss to the solder itself. Um, for about two seconds there, it'll be very shiny. Uh, then you'll see the change of color uh, where it'll dull off a little bit and then you're safe to let go. Now that we all got all three wires soldered on, we're going to bring up our stress relief here. And we're going to line up the two notches at the top and we're going to insert it in the connector end here. And now we're just going to push it all the way in and slide up our rubber boot. Now when we screw this on, remember that Tri-Flex stretch relief inside is going to tighten up around the cable. As you can see here, this is our finished cable that we've made for just about $3 as compared to buying it for $30. Now this one has two XLR female ends uh, for the demonstration purpose, but you can use them for many different purposes as well. Now we're going to test our cable to make sure it's working. Uh, you want to make sure that you use the ends of the uh, ohm meter or your cable tester. You want to make sure that you're putting them in the corresponding holes. Now here we have our first reading. And our second is good as well. And our third and final. And we're good to go. Thanks guys for watching and save some more money making your own cables.